This game at Twickenham was billed as the title decider pre-match. A win for either side would put them in pole position to land the RBS Six Nations crown. Both starting 15s were unchanged, although there was a welcome return to the England bench for Manu Tuolangi and for scrum half Rhys Webb, who was named amongst the Welsh replacements, having missed the World Cup and the opening three match days in this championship with a foot injury. The memory of Wales' World Cup win at Twickenham, no doubt fresh in the minds of the English team as they prepared for battle. And straight from the off, England looked like they were up for the game. They came desperately close to opening the scoring after just a couple of minutes. Ben Youngs deemed to have knocked the ball on. Nine white has proceeded to knock the ball on. It took until the 10th minute before the scoreboard operator was called into action. Owen Farrell's close-range penalty gave the English a three points to nil lead. The TMO was again called into action after a quarter of an hour when England looked to have got over the line. Dan Cole thought he'd got it down, but the TMO couldn't see the grounding of the ball and the Welsh line survived once more. Shortly after that, Farrell doubled England's lead with another penalty. There was much talk from both camps in the build-up to the game about the other's scrum technique. On this occasion, the referee ruled in England's favour. Not pushing straight. And Farrell found the target to make it six points to nil. The lead was stretched to nine points on 21 minutes. Farrell slotted the penalty over to give Eddie Jones' side a deserved nine-point advantage. Wales were struggling to find any kind of cohesion, and the men in white were dominating. After 32 minutes, Maro Etoje showed his strength, finding Mike Brown, who picked out Anthony Watson, and the winger was over for his ninth try in his last 11 tests. Watson scored against Ireland last time, and this was a crucial score to give England a healthy first-half advantage. Farrell added the extras, and England were 16 points to nil ahead, and that's how it stayed until half-time. Five minutes after the break, Eddie Jones' men went even further in front after George North was penalised for playing the ball on the ground. And the ever-reliable Farrell knocked the kick between the posts to leave it 19 points to nil, England were totally cruising at this point. But there was a measure of hope for Wales soon after when George Ford's clearance was brilliantly blocked by Bigger and the Welsh number 10 followed up to get the touchdown under the posts. The Ospreys out half chipped the simple conversion over the bar to leave it 19-7 and there was a possibility of a comeback for the men in red. Into the final quarter, the boot of Farrell kept the scoreboard ticking over. He landed a 65th minute penalty, and then this one in the 68th minute pushed England's lead out to a comfortable 18. 25 points to 7. In the closing stages of the game, after the concession of several penalties, the referee lost patience, and England had Dan Cole sent to the sin bin. In the same incident, Just Welsh sub Thomas Francis escaped sanction having made contact with Cole's face as the officials felt the replay was inconclusive. With England down to 14, Wales took advantage and six minutes from time, Jonathan Davies combined with Liam Williams before making the break. He then found George North who raced over giving the visitors hope with a well-worked score. His third try of the championship and sub Rhys Priestland slotted the conversion over to leave it 25-14. However, it looked like too little too late for the Welshmen. But incredibly, within another couple of minutes, there was further hope for Wales when they launched another attack as the England defence was rattled. And Talupe Falatau picked a gap, avoiding the tacklers and charging over the line to give Warren Gatland's side belief that the miracle comeback could be on. Again, Priestland converted to leave just four points between the sides with two minutes left to play. Time wasn't on Wales' side, and when they pressed England one last time, North ran out of space on the left wing, and Tuolangi forced him into touch to the relief of the home crowd. England had survived, 
and the Grand Slam remains on with a match away to France to round off their campaign. Wales will finish up at home to Italy with a sense of what might have been. England have a triple crown to celebrate in Eddie Jones' first season in charge. Will they complete the job in Paris? It's hard to bet against them. It finished England 25, Wales 21.